And number four is the more covalent bonds you have, the more stable it is, okay? Most of the time, most of the time. So, hey, this rule is more covalent bonds, the more stable the resonance structure, okay? The more stable the compound. Okay, so hey, you guys now know what resonance structures are. You now know the rules for drawing resonance. All that's left to do now is do an example so you guys can see how all this stuff applies, okay? Okay, so make sure to get all these things down, the basic rules and the four factors of stability. So hit like pause on your DVD player or something so you can get all of it down if you haven't yet. So we can go on to our example of how to actually draw these things, okay? All right, so let's take, for example, NO3 minus. Okay, so first things first, let's draw out the Lewis structure for this guy, okay? And it's gonna be an N, double bonded to an oxygen, single bonded to two oxygens. Just like for CO3, two minus. and a plus charge is going to go on that nitrogen. And hey, this is a great way to test out your formal charge skills. If you're wondering why there's a plus charge on nitrogen, just look at how many valence electrons nitrogen wants to have directly around it, right? And nitrogen wants five valence electrons directly around it. Right now, it's only got one, two, three, four valence, electron, valence electrons directly around it, right you guys? So that's like taking one valence electron from the nitrogen. If you take away one electron, one negatively charged unit away from that nitrogen, that's like adding a positive charge. That's why you see a positive charge on this nitrogen, okay? Okay, so before we start drawing out resonance structures for this guy, let me just refresh a couple of ideas in your mind about resonance. And no atoms change positions in resonance structures, which means atoms don't change how they are connected with each other, okay? The only thing that changes from one resonance structure to another is the position of electrons. Let's get that straight, you guys. The only thing we are doing is moving electrons to an alternate position in the compound. And remember, we can only move electrons that are in lone pairs or multiple bonds, not single bonds, right, you guys? And we can arrange these electrons, we can rearrange these electrons because it doesn't change the overall connectivity of the compound. It doesn't change how these atoms are connected, okay? So for example, and don't write this down, but for like CO2, CO2 looks like this, there's carbon double bonded to two oxygens. Okay, so here's two electrons in this multiple bond right here, okay? Two electrons being shared between that carbon and the oxygen. So hey, if for some reason I broke that bond, if I broke this bond right here, took it away, would that change the connectivity of this compound? No, right? This carbon would still be connected to the oxygen, right? So hey, this is why you can move electrons in lone pairs or multiple bonds. It doesn't change the connectivity of the compound. But we can't move electrons that are part of single bonds because if you broke single bonds, then you would disconnect atoms and change the compound's connectivity. For example, and don't write this down either, this is just for your visualization, okay? So, hey, but for like CH4 or something, CH4, okay? If for some reason, I broke this bond, I took away these two electrons, okay? The carbon and the hydrogen would be disconnected from each other, right? I would have changed their positions. So you can't move electrons in single bonds. Atoms would not be connected with one another in the same way. And that's not a resonance structure, you guys. The only thing you change in a resonance structure is electrons. Atoms remain connected the same way. So hey, you can't move electrons that are in single bonds, okay? All right, so let me ask you then, can we even draw a resonance structure for this guy, NO3 minus? Does he have any electrons in lone pairs or multiple bonds that we can move? 
Because if all he has is single bonds, we can't do anything, right? Remember, resonance structures come from changing the position of electrons in lone pairs and multiple bonds, okay? So, hey, does this guy have either of those? Yes, he does, right? He's got a double bond and lone pairs on all of these oxygens, right? Okay, so, hey, here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna try to step into your shoes, someone who's never drawn resonance structures before, and just talk you through the experience of drawing a resonance structure for the first time, okay? I don't care about getting the right resonance structure, I just want to explore all the different possibilities that you guys might be thinking of when you draw this for the first time, okay? So that way I can point out things you do and don't want to do, and eventually lead us to the correct resonance structure, okay? So, hey, if I'm you, this is what I know. I can move electrons that are in lone pairs or electrons in multiple bonds, right? Hey, whoa, wait a minute, you guys, I just realized. Do you have any idea what moving electrons means? Because we've sort of talked about it when we talked about making and breaking bonds, but we never really got into how they actually move or anything like that. And you need to know how this works in order to draw resonance structures or any reaction for that matter, okay? So, hey, let's take, a care, let's take care of this right now, okay? Okay, you guys, so what do I mean by move electrons? Because where the heck are we moving these electrons to? Where do electrons got to go? Okay, well let me break it down for you, because these electrons aren't just deciding on their own to move around, right? The atoms that they're connected to are the ones telling them where to go, because atoms control their electrons, right? And there's a couple things atoms can do with electrons. An atom can either share its electrons and make a bond with another atom, or if an atom is already sharing electrons with another atom, then it can choose to take those electrons back and break that bond, okay? They can be electron Indian givers, I guess you could say. Or, you know what, they don't even have to move their electrons at all if they don't want to, giving you a third possibility of what atoms can do with their electrons, okay? So, hey, if you want to write this down, atoms have three choices with their electrons. So, number one, atoms can choose to share their electrons, and this results in them making bonds with another atom. Okay, the second thing they can do is, if they're already sharing electrons with another atom, they can take those back. They can take those back, and this is going to cause them to break that bond with that atom. Okay, and as a third thing that atoms can do with their electrons, they can just do nothing, okay? Do nothing. And hey, flip back for a second in your notes to the CO32- example, and let me just point out how the electrons were moving around, how those atoms use their electrons to make and break bonds, okay? So I'm going to erase this real quick and redraw the resonance structures for CO32-, okay? So hey, you don't have to redraw these, you guys just flip back into your notes and we're just going to add a couple things, okay? Okay, so these are the three resonance structures that we saw for CO32- earlier. And if you look at this first resonance structure, you'll notice that the oxygen on the right has lone pairs on it and is single bonded to carbon, right? Now, to get to this second resonance structure, keep looking at this first resonance structure, okay? So, hey, this oxygen on the right has one, two, three lone pairs on it, right? It uses one of its lone pairs, let me just say this, this one right here, okay? So it uses one of its lone pairs to form another bond with that carbon. Let's say that again. The oxygen moved two, two of its electrons from a lone pair to form a double bond between it and the carbon, okay? So if you look at the second resonance structure, you should see this result. That oxygen now only has two lone pairs because it moved one of its lone pairs towards that carbon to make a bond. And if you're really on the ball, you'll notice that that's not the only difference between resonance structure 1 and resonance structure 2. If you look at resonance structure 1 again, you'll notice that the top oxygen has two lone pairs and is double bonded to carbon. However, in the second resonance structure, that oxygen now has three lone pairs and is single bonded to carbon. What happened here? Simple. Electrons got moved. In the first resonance structure, the oxygen on top decided that it didn't want to share so many of its electrons with that carbon anymore, so it took them back. Remember, an atom can either share its electrons, take back its electrons, or do nothing, right? 
this oxygen right here chose to take back those two electrons that had been part of the double bond and is now using them as a third lone pair, which you see in the second resonance structure, okay?